Hey everybody, welcome to Chaos Breakers Podcast, a Final Fantasy retrospective podcast. We are talking about Final Fantasy VII Remake, but before we get into it, let's just introduce the cast. I am your Dr. Recommended Dose of Nerdiness, a.k.a. your nerd today. Two next to me, we have Harv, the beard and the hair himself. Under me, we have Frank, the bringer of chaos. And joining us again, the Prince of Hype himself from IGN, from PlayStation Source, in his new video... What does Final Fantasy VII mean to you in 2024? Just came out. Kevin Diaz. That's true. It did. A huge oh, yeah. uh, collaborative effort. You know what I'm saying? Shout Great out to everyone video. That, shout out to everyone that submitted, of course. Carlos here. Did a beautiful video. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Thank you. No, yeah, it was a, honestly a really good, a, a amazing video. It really came together well. I'm so glad I didn't spoil anything for myself. Because I saw it, like, I up- uploaded it to the drive, and I was like... Oh, well, I see Kyle, I see Demetrius, I see, you know, Grayson. Like, oh, let me start watching. No, I was like, no, 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 let's not do that. I was like, I'm going to watch to see how Kevin does this, everything. It I was, was afraid, like, damn, like, what if, like, only, like, 10 people, which, like, that would have been fine, you know? But yeah. I was like, damn, like, what if it was, like, you know, a couple people? But I'm happy, yo, we got 30. We got 30. Nice. Yeah, it was nice. Very, Hell yeah. yeah. Very, very nice. That's a tight hour, so many people, really like, good. so many people DM, like, wanting to do it, but they couldn't, and, like, you know, so it would have been a lot more, but. Yeah, it was great. It was great. It was great. I know. I wish it would have been I, 31 if I finished on time. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. And I wish uh, it's a shame no one at the movie theater when you went wanted to Bro, jump oh in. My that was God, such a good idea bro. when you said that. I was like, oh. So I pull up early, right? Because I'm like, yo, let me see if I can get some people that want to be on camera and just like, just give a quick little, you know, 30 second, you know, how you feel about 587. Because obviously you like 587 if you're here at Avid Children, right? Bro nobody was trying to nobody wanted nothing to do with nothing about with any type of recording oh, oh my god nothing bro i was like i am man oh well <laughs> fuck yeah let's go well i guess so oh i would have done god. it for someone i, I would have done it yeah to jump. maybe yeah. it's maybe i like misjudge how natural it is for us to talk on camera and like on mics, and, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Versus yeah, yeah. like the average person, like that's probably like a big you, deal. You put you that's put my you put me like four or five years ago and tried to do shit on camera, couldn't right. do it, could right. not do it. Right. Now that I've been that's doing fair. it for like three years or so, like three or four years now, like now it's just like it's just natural. Like I rather yeah, no, do it's it on natural, camera. No. Yeah. Everyone yeah. here, I bet. No, like it's this is <laughs> nothing. You know? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It also depends on like the events too, right? Like when you go to like a like a comic con or something like that, like you're kind of. You're kind of very much like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll be on camera if I need yeah. to because oh, everybody's right. got cameras out and stuff like and, that. And, and, but it's like, like you're around your people, maybe, right? Yeah. Too, but yeah, it's said about. I, I would have assumed the same thing though. Like you're at, you're watching Final Fantasy Seven Avid Children. Like you're right. No, like you're in your headspace. Like if I've been to Comic Con too, and you walk around, I was like, oh, I'm comfortable because I'm looking around everyone I know, and like everyone's right. as nerdy as I am. So like nothing's weird. I feel like you want to talk about it almost. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I watched this fun little short yesterday about uh, about uh, game. How many how many uh, copies each Final Fantasy has has uh, sold? And Final Fantasy VII is still like number three or number two. What's number one? Number one, I think, was Final 15? Fantasy ten. I think uh, no, fifteen. It was fifteen. It was fifteen. Oh, 15. It was 15. Yeah, Final yeah. 15. yeah, Final Fantasy fifteen was number one. I and feel like fifteen was, like, was a lot of first Final Fantasies for a lot. It was of like people. a lot of crazy hype. Yeah, yeah. From what I remember. Yeah. yeah, like that shit was anticipated as fuck. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and, it yeah. I was very, I was very surprised to see seven that high. I think it's like a little bit over ten million copies sold, which is kind that's of insane. Lot. I wonder if you like can, can you start putting remake and rebirth into that? <laughs> like you know what I mean? Oh, I wonder if they funnel all that. I think I think they were separate. They were separate. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. On the graph, yeah, they were separate. Come on, rebirth. <laughs> yes, I'm hoping. Yes, I'm hoping as uh, much hype as we've had for this. It's 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 gonna. Be, I think it's gonna be a tough task, mainly because it is a sequel to a game that people are gonna be like, I had to play the first one to play the second one, mm-hmm. even though even I've, though they've said like you could just you go right through the second no. one. Mm-hmm. Do we think it beats NPD this month for just being on the market for one day? One day. <laughs> That's what so. I'm curious about. I think so. What do you think of like what else came? What I mean, else? Yeah. What else came out this February? Month? Um, big releases. It wasn't Tekken. That was January. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, well, there was something that came out this. Suicide Helldivers. Squad. Hell Divers. Yeah, Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad's not. not. <laughs> I hope that. I mean, I don't know, man. It's I don't like the, that one. <laughs> the like, not like from our space, but like the average oh, yeah. person, like yeah, 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 like the average consumer. Maybe I don't know. Maybe, 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 maybe. Uh, we have what Foam Stars. Is in there? You know, <laughs> you, got, you got to get out throw that one in there. <laughs> yes, it's free to play. It doesn't count. 
I mean, technically, oh, it's only free to play Helldivers on PlayStation. Oh, yeah, I guess oh, it's, right, it's yeah. only a PlayStation. It's free yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Helldivers, yeah, and then Persona Three Reload, I guess, is the other one. Persona Three Reload, oh, Persona and Skull and Bones. Three. Damn, that's right. Skull and Bones. That game finally came out. <laughs> finally, I think Skull and Bones almost hit a million copies sold. So like, that's not that's true. That's true. And I do have a hear from Sea Thieves coming out the PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Before we yeah, start, think, though, oh yeah, I do yes, have yes. a surprise for you guys. Yes. Oh. Um. So I'm sure everyone here and everybody who is uh seen Final Fantasy VII Rebirth uh, marketing has seen this commercial about uh Donbe. <laughs> yeah. Donbe. 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 Yes. We got We got. We got the fucking Donbe. I got some hot water here. While we're talking, I'm just gonna let this seep. Hell we're gonna yeah, try it man. live. We're gonna do it live. <laughs> do it live. I got some oh, Don Bay. <laughs> what flavor? Yeah. It's the one that he was holding in the in the in the promotional. Mm. I had to buy a three pack, like three other flavors with it, just to God, get I this one. Because I hope buying it's just buying just this was seventy five dollars. If you wanted like a case of them, you couldn't oh buy them like separately. God. So oh, I had Jesus. to spend twenty bucks to buy a three pack of like two other ones plus this, which what? wasn't that bad. I think I paid like five dollars. You'll eat it. It's not like you won't. Oh yeah. But like getting this was like hard, and then Amazon almost didn't drop it off today, so I was like, oh. I'm guessing, <laughs> I'm like, guessing it has to get imported, so that's probably why. It's damn, what, so. damn, now I now I kind of want to try it. I'm, 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 we're, dude, I was just saying, I was saying to Frank yesterday, I was like, I like it's so weird seeing like uh, Square Enix like partnering with like noodle companies for some yeah. reason, and like, they keep doing like, it. Really? Noodle with Final that's Fantasy 15, Udon? and then this. Oh shit, that looks really good. Before we start, um. Mm-hmm. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth also did like something with um I don't I'm not sure if this is like a nas- like a nationwide chain or like a local thing in AZ. Oh. I doubt it's just local. But that Insomniac Cookies thing, have y'all seen that? Or yes, Insomniac yeah, Cookies? Yeah, it's nationwide. I'm, is yeah. that like a, pissed off about that? Is that like a nationwide thing? Uh, that, so really. Gene Park got it right mm-hmm. like he had he got him. So they have to be in Washington, right? Because I think Gene Park is in Washington. Yeah, but um. I, I check the app almost every day, and they don't have them. They have like this football like promotion going on right now. Oh, I think it have, seems like it's a sleeve. Things. It's like a sleeve that they put over the normal. It's cookies. like a box. Yeah, yeah. So it's it normal box that they cookies. put a sleeve. But they got the it's cloud still... cookies. So it says oh, it's yeah. going to be oh, appearing yeah. worldwide in June 2024. Hmm. Um, Interesting. How did Gene Park get this? Man? He got the hookup, man. He got yeah. the hookup. Hook yeah, because when I it, it popped up on Facebook for me, I think I tagged. Kevin, <laughs> I was like, "Look, yeah, that's how I found out." Actually, yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, "Because I, I know at my job they have a, there's like three locations near my job because we're like we're a 24 hour hospital. Like, so I've done it a couple times. It's really nice. Um, three o'clock in the morning, cookies with some milk. Hell yeah, hell yeah, man. Jeez. At at, the, at work, <laughs> it's perfect. Fire. Um, Fire. but uh, yeah, I, I haven't got a chance to get it. Ooh, maybe I'll do it Monday because it is my my friend's birthday. I think they have yeah. free ones. There we go." I'll get. I'll, they I'll have, keep the they box. They have special cookies in there. They have special cookies. Like there's a cloud. They're delicious. Oh, oh, it's the cloud fire. cookie. I thought you meant in general. I was like, no, they're yeah, they're delicious. <laughs> no, yeah, they're, they're I would gladly are... be sponsored by Insomnia. Pretty good. Yeah, it, it, it just says that they're they're available for a limited time. That's really all they say. Yeah, I, I I keep checking the app to see if they have them. I kind of I just want to try the 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 special cookies on there. I want to try the cloud cookie. I think it's like marshmallow this, and some shit. Is Insomnia yeah. cookies? Is this is this like a chain yeah, it's like a chain I now guess, yeah I, I guess the chain now yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. they're they're away from me but i'm willing to make the drive <laughs> i think this is a U, i think this might be a u.s thing only because i've never heard of this company before yeah, yeah no, so, this is a US thing. so at least for like i think they stopped delivering at like three o'clock in the morning or something like that so there was a couple overnight shifts when i first started at my job that i did and like me my wife and then like another nurse like we ordered and it was just, you get ice cream, cookies, cookie sandwiches, all this stuff. You can do cakes and stuff. It's awesome. It, they they come in clutch. And then one of my favorite things about working in my area, like a lot of businesses will just drop off samples. Like we don't order like fucking crazy people. Like insomnia cookies will always like drop off. Here's a sample. Try our stuff. I'm like, bro, I gladly. No, I'm not even gonna tell you that you. I ordered <laughs> like an hour ago. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Jimmy Jones used to do it too. Available my area. They do. Ooh, there you go. Yeah. So the so the the twelve pack is thirty. I'll do it. No That's way, Kev. Do we need twelve cookies? Just, but does yeah, it come with yeah. the, the? This the is the Final issue. Fantasy you ones? will eat twelve cookies because they're delicious. Oh, it doesn't. Oh, I see the cloud little dipper. 
Yeah, the cloud little dipper. There you go. <laughs> the cloud big dipper. Let's go, dude. That's the best, man. Let's go. And Let's see, mine is, still says the usual by Justin Jefferson. I don't even know who fuck Justin Jefferson even is. That's crazy. Square does do like really random, like not even just noodle companies, right? Because in fifteen we had cup noodles. We we joked about that in our like chaos bringing chat but there's and there's a whole goddamn mission for that but what was it DiGiorno or no not DiGiorno it was Grubhub with uh 14 for the longest time yeah right? <laughs> so many I, uh, I got the little pizza emo yeah it was Grubhub yeah I'm totally lying I don't think these are dedicated like cookies I'm co- okay so these are just sizes so there's uh where maybe I misread it it's also possible I'll I'll misread it. It. because I swear they, they said something about a cloud cookie and stuff like that when I read it's, it it's telling me to pick a selection of cookies. Yeah, you can mm. mix and match. So the uh, Ebonome ones are really good. Interesting. Interesting. I understand I'm a heavier guy. No, this just makes me sound heavier. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm a heavy guy too. You know? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, ah, damn it. Yeah. I tried <laughs> those, to those cookies come in like, clutch. When it's like 2 a.m. and you're like, I want something sweet, they'll deliver a f- some ice cream, some cookies. Oh if God, you want the cream yeah. cheese icing on the side, you can get that as well. Yeah. Comes in a nice box. Yeah. Oh my I'm god, when they're it. warm? Oh my god, they're great. Yeah, I think I should do it now here live. Will, will it show up? Because at least I have the family here. Like, you know, we can all enjoy the cookies. Yeah, there you go. Oh, true, true, true. I just want the box. So. That's why I did Universal. I bought like a <laughs> <laughs> I went to Universal with like family and friends and stuff, and then I bought like a dozen voodoo donuts because I've always wanted to try them. Oh, voodoo donuts is so good. Dude, it's I love voodoo so donuts. good. And they were like, all right, I'm like, oh, you gonna eat that all? I'm like, no, What'd you get? motherfucker. Um, did you get the Captain Crunch one? I did. That was a that was Captain a special Crunch one. Was good. And then I got like classic dozen, and they're so good. Oh my god! But I was like, no, asshole! Like this is for all of us. I'm not gonna eat like twelve donuts by myself. I mean, I could. I just don't want to. <laughs> I got just put that shit on the table, one. open it up, and was like, everyone have some. <laughs> just leave me white this chocolate, one. white chocolate macadamia, fellas. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, that's good. White chocolate macadamia is a fucking S tier cookie. Yeah, yeah. The M M&M and M one's good too. Uh, I'll get M M&M. and M. I, I love oatmeal. I if hopes. you love oatmeal raisin, it's. I love oatmeal raisin. Bro. It's the people best one I've ever oatmeal, had. Oatmeal raisin people is one of the best cookies. I've people ever. be yeah. hating, and I can't. People I can't. Hate it, yeah. I I can't. I cannot. I cannot get with that. I'm sorry. I can't. No. Yeah. How do you not like oatmeal raisin? That's like oatmeal one of the best ones. Hard. Exactly. Then theirs. Slabs. Theirs is really good too. Um, while Kevin orders, <laughs> yeah, <that's actually> good <laughs> which I love, yeah. and Frank cooks his food, I will go into some of our notes. <laughs> so Final Fantasy we're talking about Final Fantasy 7 Remake as I mentioned developed by Tetsuya Nomura as director this time around with uh, Kashuhigi Nojima as writer composed by Nobu Umatsu the GOAT and published by Square Enix uh, so what I want to go through some development notes uh, typically we go right into the story and characters but I wanted to touch on some development notes because um, this game was in development for a while or rumored to be in development for a long time so um, I have it here. Yes, here we go. So in 2005, a tech demo showing off what the upcoming PlayStation 3 was shown. Uh, in the demo, we got a look at the opening train scene from Final Fantasy VII and what was modern graphics. Uh, from then on, rumors swirled for the remake in one form, shape, or another. Uh, Square Enix at the time kept denying it for years and years and years until finally on June 15th, 2015, 10 years after, um, Final Fantasy VII Remake was finally revealed at Sony's E3 presentation. Uh, and I clearly remember, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. I was ecstatic when that trailer showed off. It was so insane. <laughs> like, just like the the second, like, and that trailer, by the way, if you played the PlayStation version of um, Final Fantasy VII, is in. Like it's like you see a special video and you click it and it's that trailer, the E three presentation one. And God, every time I watch it, it's just it's just so hype. Um, and that you know what, we'll touch on this in the episode uh, later. I'll, I'll I'll say it now, put a pin in it. We'll talk about it at the end when we discuss uh, something about rebirth, uh, our predictions. But that uses the word reunion a lot, and we've been talking yeah. about the last three episodes. And I know again, reunion has been used in Crisis Core, like we mentioned, I think uh, in in the OG episode. I think part three is going to be called reunion with no knowledge of what happens in rebirth. I am. I think it might be reunion because they keep it's used in so much promotional material. 
That I, what if it, they call it reunite? <laughs> it's like it's close, but not the same. There you go. That that's some square Enix shit, actually. Jesus Christ. Uh, but yeah, various companies, including CyberConnect Two, originally assisted with development at the time. In 2017, Square Enix brought development uh, of the game in house. Um, I think there was a lot of yeah. Issues. There what who, who was sorry? What was the company that was making it? CyberConnect Two. Yeah, CyberConnect. Yeah, that makes and a lot of sense like... considering how this game launched. And typically, yeah, well, they, they... they do some good games. Yeah, they, like the, yeah. the dot hack series and stuff. Oh, I mean, just in general, just like how like there was some issues with like you know like certain like texture models and stuff like that. Like be, like switching hands in development. I mean, makes sense why yeah. why stuff like that happened. One hundred percent. Yeah, and uh, I, I, initially I was. I mean, they were rumored for a while, and then we finally got confirmation that they were technically working on it when they got taken off of it. Um, but yeah, I was, I was kind of a fan of there. I'm trying to think, uh, Harv, you might be a better source for this. I remember the doc hat dot hack series, pardon me, that they created was, was, there was something else they did that was pretty big. I know they work on like the Naruto games. I think that's where a lot of people were worried. Yeah. I think it was the, yeah, they did the Naruto games. They all, I think, and then they did like some, like some anime stuff like Jojo's as well. I remember mm, the, the arena fighters, um, right? Kind well, of. Was it the yeah, yeah. North so, North developer too? So they, they do a lot Most of the likely, fighting yeah. games and stuff like that. Yeah. And then, then they did that. Their main thing is from what I'm seeing, dot hack and Naruto. Like that is like their, what was yeah. the name of the studio? They did uh, Cyber Kakarot Connect too. as well. Oh, yeah. oh! They did Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Oh, oh interesting. Really? Oh. Yeah. I said I played the demo for that and I really enjoyed it. I actually been thinking about p- purchasing it a couple times. I almost pulled the trigger like every couple months. I'm like, mm, maybe. Mm, maybe. I feel like it was on PS Plus, no, was it? Maybe not. Maybe not. You There's so many Dragon Ball Z be... games though. Yeah. It could have been Yeah, you know, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, that's that fair. is the issue with that that whole that whole well, like their next game that's coming out this year is Demon Slayer. No, oh, they're arena fighter. Right? They got another one. Yeah. yeah. Off topic, though, did you guys see the Jujutsu Kaisen games? Like the, <laughs> the, the arena fighter. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. It's just the anime. <laughs> it looks like a DVD screen. It's so bad. <laughs> it's so bad. Oh, yeah, I've heard, heard good things about it. See, yeah. the only thing about that game that not to get too much off topic is that it, it's not going to give me the level of depression that the anime does. So why buy it? Why why be happy? You know, yeah. Mario the sad. other day was like, I I want to either read uh, Chainsaw Man or Jujutsu Kaisen. I'm like, just don't, just read Chainsaw. <laughs> you Man. said that just yesterday. I was like, I was just thinking the same thing. I was gonna, I was gonna comment. I was like, dude, no, Jujutsu Kaisen is great. It's so depressing. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. so well, sad. It's, it's 242 chapters in at this point already. Like, just watch the anime. <laughs> just watch the anime. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm caught up to the anime, and now I think it was a friend of the show, DJ Chris V, was like, hey man, you could pick up from here. I'm like. I might do that, but mm-hmm. now I'm like in enough, you know, with a movie and everything. So I might do that. But uh, oh yeah, we were gonna continue. Uh, in 2017, Square Enix, like I mentioned, brought in in the game to in-house development. In 2019, May of uh, pardon me, we got our f- next look uh, during the Sony State of Play. God, I love State of Play so yes. much. I know me and Kevin always talk about them. Can I brag a little bit here? Mm-hmm. I was at the E3 where this game was showed off. You were in the audience for it. No, I was, I was, I was oh, at okay. E3. So, just to paint the picture, right? This is the one you and Mary in, went to, right? Yeah, you walk into E3 almost immediately. I think like uh, maybe two. Uh, no, no, this is almost right by the front door. Uh, there is a giant Shinra reactor, like diorama oh, set up. I've seen oh, that. Yeah, yeah. Bit, like, the, yeah, I've seen that. Oh, that's and so sick. they. What you would do is they had Shinra employees. Like there was an entrance. <laughs> And you would have Shimmer and Proys, and they would give you like a boarding pass. Just like in the how in the game, they're like, oh, for you to get on the train, you have to have a boarding pass. Yeah. Got a boarding pass. And they gave you 20 minutes with the intro of the game, which was like uh, the Mako reactor and stuff like oh, that. Oh my God. Um, so cool, bro. And I think if you finished it in under 20 minutes, you had a chance to get a t shirt. Um, mm-hmm. By the time I did it, they didn't have any more of my sizes. So I was just like, ah. all right, fine, did, whatever. Is that the one also that on display you could take a photo with the, um, mm-hmm. the motorcycle? Yep. God damn. God damn it. That's, that's awesome. That's, it was cool too. It looks like it looks like a Shinra reactor and everything. I have the boarding passes somewhere. Like some I have all my E3 stuff in a box somewhere. Is that that's is that awesome. on Mario's video from it Mario? should be. I hope so. I hope it's YouTube. Yeah, because it was it was one of the cooler Mario ones. Rivera. Yeah. Yeah, I know I got a picture with Cloud and Tifa. Because there was a cloud there was a really good cloud like cosplayer just hanging around the Dude, area. I, that was one of the coolest things when they used to do that with E3, man. They would get some decent ass actors. Like it's it's it was like borderline Disney. Like when you meet like like Jasmine, you're like, no, that's Princess Jasmine. Like, doesn't that's, that's not an actor. Uh, damn, that's awesome, dude. Yeah, I will admit though, I wasn't a Final Fantasy fan at the time, 
So I played it and I was like, wow, this plays like Devil May Cry. I like this. I like this a lot. And I'm like texting <laughs> people who me. are Final Fantasy fans and I'm like, dude, this game's awesome. This game's awesome. You're going to love it. <laughs> so like, I've been was, it, was it basically the demo that we got like right before the game dropped? I think was so. Was it basically that, yeah. that like first bombing run? Oh, yeah, yeah, it stopped yeah, like it right be, yeah. a, It stopped like right after that. I think you can still got to escape, but then it stopped like a little bit after that. Yeah, that's what the demo did. Because he definitely fought the Scorpion in the mm-hmm. demo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I think nice. it was supposed to be like the original demo you got i think probably through pizza hut back in the day on playstation like yeah i think you did that original demo disc that i think so many of us had oh so back in oh it's the same like amount of it's the same like sliver of game i believe so demo. yeah 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 because oh, i think I didn't know if that. i'm right i, I think whatever cool. demo disc had that one whether it be like official playstation magazine at the time because when that was so annoying just to go off a tangent when you would buy that magazine in store and you would open it up, like, oh, I'm so excited, man! I get a demo this this month, and someone was stole the demo from like whatever mm-hmm. Borders or like Barnes and Noble. You're like, fuck, man, this suck, fucking sucks, dude. Um, but I PlayStation had some thing with Pizza Hut at the time, um, and you could get demo disc and stuff, and that might have been on one of them, like one of the early ones. Um, and I think it was the I was thinking it was the very beginning bombing mission. Like a version of it, and it, it obviously would have been more condensed because the OGs like it's a very short amount of time to year in there, and uh, there was all there was a bunch of other games. It might be like I swear to God, probably Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, if I'm right, yeah, it could be that. Um, but yeah, so May nineteenth, that state of play, we got we got our next look, first look at Aerith, and then finally a year later, fifteen years after the tech demo was shown. We finally got the promise of Final Fantasy VII Remake, April 10th, 2020. And, I mean, as, as Kevin said in, in his video, like, you changed our lives. <laughs> like, it literally did, man. Like, I mean, I don't think... I, I think for me and Harv, I mean, we were huge Final Fantasy fans anyway, but it brought so many people like you, Frank, like you, Kevin, mm-hmm. into the series. Definitely. And yeah. and it just... It's, it's changed the game, man. And it... It's so funny because I think in episode zero, me and Harv, not we weren't negative on seven, but it's like we each have our own favorites. Um, like eight is one of Harv's favorite, nine is my favorite Final Fantasy of all time. And it was like, oh, well, this is like our intro, you know. I feel like the characters were so fleshed out. And then replaying OG earlier this month, I was like, no, shit, no, this game is fucking amazing. Like, I don't yeah. know why I downplayed it before. <laughs> like, this is insane. God damn, this is so good, man. And then going back in the remake and and intermission, which we'll talk about soon as well. Just just uh, those three are just incredible. Just incredible. I'm hoping that the level of care and love that I have witnessed with seven OG, like that research is after playing like twenty some years later. I hope I have that with Final Fantasy IX. I hope when I we, we get to that episode. I'm so scared that it's not going to hold up the way I, I, I loved it. Maybe, like, it's just, like, gameplay-wise, it might not, and that I'm okay with that, but story-wise, it was such a special game for me. I'm hoping that it holds up when we get to that episode in a couple months. I'm really, really nervous, though, but... Yeah, I'm excited for those games. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm excited for the next three games, eight, eight, nine, and ten, because everybody, everybody has said either one of those games has been good. Like one of their favorites, I mean. I think Harv said mm-hmm. 10's his favorite. I know uh, eight, um, eight's favorite. someone eight's his favorite. Someone said mm-hmm. 10's their favorite to me. Uh, and then you like nine. So yeah, I love nine. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. Mm-hmm. Hey, I reached out to uh, some some people. Hopefully, I get them on uh, episode nine and ten. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I keep checking my email. Uh, as soon as I emailed them, it was like refresh, refresh, refresh. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see when we get down the line. But. With that out of the way, let's talk about the story, and then um, we'll do this little basic story thing. We'll do the characters, and then I've carved out some of the ending scenes because I wanted to go through them, and that kind of will lead us into our prediction discussion of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Um, so, the story. What seems like a modern retelling of the original Final Fantasy, only this first part giving a greater focus on the characters and stories involved specifically in Midgar expands and creates a whole new unknown tale for us to follow as the world of Final Fantasy 7 is remade. Um, Because I didn't want to go too much into it. If you want to know more about the world of Final Fantasy 7, watch our episode um, 7, not 7.2, which is episode. (laughs) Um, Because it's a lot of it is very similar. It is very expanded, but 
some of the stuff that we'll talk about with this remake is kind of more spoilery that we'll get into. Um, and then I also wanted to follow up here with uh, episode intermission. It's a DLC that follows Yuffie as she infiltrates Shinra to steal their ultimate materia during the events of the main game. Specifically, I think it's what chapters five to seven, five to seven, right? For for uh, which one? When Yuffie, yeah, intermission. When Yuffie's in, oh, Midgard. like when that happens, yeah, yeah. It's like a, it's like it's, episodes um, five yeah, through. It's like- yeah. Five, yeah, yeah. It's like five, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah it's a couple. She witnesses the fall of um, Seven's plate. Um, mm-hmm. And that, guy yeah, I love that ending. I forgot how hard, like, I was like, oh, man, it's going to be sad. And, you know, we'll get into it. But, like, Dude. I was like, man, I'm not, I, I don't remember being so sad. And then I, I screenshot it, like, a bunch of the the ending scenes with uh, Son and and, um, and Yuffie. I was like, God damn it. It's God sad. Damn it. Yeah, it's sad. And I was, yeah. there, I was talking to my wife, and I was like, fuck man like i don't really love yuffie and i remember saying that in the og episode like i used her in combat it was fun but like character wise i'm like oh she's annoying and i love her so much like remade his remake has just brought these characters even more like limelight every more fleshed out they're just even more amazing than they were in the og such a great series but wanted to go through uh we'll go through the characters right now and who they're voiced by uh, because there's some cool little ones here. Uh, so we got Cloud Strife, voiced by Cody Christian of Pretty Little Liars and Teen Wolf. Um, the main protagonist introduced as a former member of Shield. Oh, sh- sorry, I was reading comic books earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading some uh, some Marvel, basically. Yeah, right. Pretty much, yeah. Um, a soldier, pardon me, now operating as a mercenary, caught up in the actions of eco terrorist group Avalanche. Uh, we have Barrett Wallace, voiced by John Eric Bentley, uh, who I put here as his credit, LeBron James in Multiverses, uh, because LeBron LeBron, James? LeBron did not voice himself in that game. What? Not... Yeah. That's, no, no, no. A, that's such a weird choice. It's like, I'm not going to voice myself in a game. <laughs> yeah, because it's a Space Jam. Like, he has a Space Jam 2 outfit. It's like mm. Toon Squad outfit. And he, um, no. No, did not want that's, to voice himself. Such a weird choice. Give me one sec here. I'm gonna grab a fork really quick because I forgot that for the Ooh, for yeah. the for the for the Don <laughs> Yeah. yeah. While while you get that, we'll also we'll we'll pause right here, but we'll also talk about um the fact that it was weird seeing Sephiroth in a fairy costume. Not judging yes. his preferences. Listen, yes. like you know, yes. I just yeah. where where no, does I'm... the tail come from? Where does it attach? My thing is like, what is have they considered? the sanctity of canon in this scenario like what it, yeah you know i know this is not the first time they've done you know uh 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 out of game cross promotional thing 15 mm-hmm. had a lot of it you know um mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. i recall mm-hmm. but what's the what's the root of all <laughs> like did this happen is i this need in the, is canon this in the live stream is you this know? at the edge of the universe, you know, at the end of, of, of this game? Like, there's so These much. Stuff, what's the time frame, you know, uh, of the edge of the universe? Because him wearing the, the, the ears and what I'm assuming is, is a plug of some sort for the tail. Um, hey, you know, again, I'm not judging. No king shaming here. You're talking about the commercial? Yeah. Yeah. You know, no, yeah, no, where no. does that tail go, bro? It, it has, you know, and he's already weather, wearing leather. Like, so much stuff, like. There's a lot. There's Lines a lot going up on. with where the tail should be. Oh god, that, that looks that really the, good. This is what the Dome Bay looks like. Dome Bay. Uh, I haven't had I haven't had this before. I haven't had uh, noodles like this. I've, so. ne- I've never had Dome Bay. So is it like ramen type thing? I mean, oh, like, like like it 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 kind of looks like it, but yeah. it, it, I guess the noodles are a little bit thicker. Like these are interesting. Okay. Let's get, let's get some action shots here. The noodles are a little bit thicker, mm-hmm. right? Okay. Um, the okay. sauce is really fucking. Kind, it's kind of sweet. It's like a sweet chili sauce. Oh, is that what that um, is up top? There okay. is yeah, there is some Naruto okay. in there. Oh. So damn, it's like legit. Damn. See, this is why I want to go to Japan, oh, man. Because you get like awesome. dollar store ramen and it's fucking delicious. You come here in America, it's like, all right, it's it's okay. Ramen's all, almost two dollars now, man. Ramen's gone up in price. That's crazy. Fucking joke. Not, ramen, <laughs> Not the fucking ramen, bro. But they say it's bad for you now, so uh, who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Yeah. Um real quick, it's, uh it's, Harv, it's just, it's it's rebirth weekend, man. You know. Live yeah, just enjoy food. yourself, man. Uh, listen, yeah. I'm so much Chinese food is going in my belly tomorrow. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Oh, it's good. Hell okay, yeah. oh, that's real good. It just nice. 
Very Honestly, good. it tastes a lot like a, a better beef ramen. Like if you ever buy the beef flavor of ramen, oh like yeah, March, yeah. It's, it's a way better, like more kind of complex beef ramen. The noodles are really like nice and kind of chewy. Um, a little bit fishy. I guess there's some fish sauce in there, maybe from the packet, but it's it's good. It's really good. I'd okay. recommend it. Hundred ten out of ten. Okay, nine out of ten. Nice. No, nothing's perfect. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna clip that out because we're gonna we're gonna send that to them. We're gonna we're gonna get Nerd Day and Point of Progress and PlayStation Source sponsored. <laughs> All right, this is by, a, by, that's my by goal. Nissan? Yes, hell yeah, hell yeah, man. I would love ramen for life. Do not play with me. I would have oh. bad sodium levels, but still, listen, it's worth it. Uh, before yeah. we continue with the with the characters, I, I just catch horror with our discussion. Where does the the tail go on Sephiroth? You know, in the Dombe commercial. Mm-hmm. Right up the butt. It has to, right? Right up the butt. It has a samurai, like the, the tail, the, the, oh, the butt oh, plug no. is a samurai sword hilt. No. Oh. 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 oh, okay. Listen, hilt. Yeah, okay. yeah, no, 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 it's not the Masamune. <laughs> it's not, no, not the blade part. No, no, no. He's tall. He's not that tall. You know what I mean? Okay, okay, okay. But it's at, least, to, it's at least the length of, it's, it's at least the length of Masamune. You know, the Masamune like handle? The, the it's that yeah. length. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Hey, you know, he's got the cape. So it could block it. Maybe sticking out a little bit. You know, you never know. You never know. I was gonna say, oh, is Har frozen, or did we just shock no, him? Into, no, did we I'm shock here. him? With I think Har's here. Heart, 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 heart kink shame. <laughs> no I haven't. Shame. Okay, so to, to be fair, I haven't seen this commercial that you guys are talking about. Right? Oh my god! Oh, god. Oh, oh, god. Yeah, we have to take. We, we we'll have to show you at the end. But yeah, it's yeah. uh, it's hilarious. I was gonna clip it. Put the clip here, Carlos. Yes, indeed. Okay. Why should get oh, copyright claim now? <laughs> <laughs> I love the way he says he says it. He's just like Don Bay, Don Bay. It's it sounds like a fucking Telemundo it's commercial. Really, also, it, it, it's, it's, yeah, it really it does bizarre. actually, and and it also kind of like it, it, it kind of solidifies that they're, that they're a couple, right? They've they, you know what happens out in the marshes stays in the marshes, right? Like with soldiers. I feel mm-hmm. like one hundred percent Zach and Sephiroth have have spent the night together. Yeah, mm. I don't know about Cloud and Sephiroth, but one hundred percent Zach and Sephiroth. Oh, but Not then because Cloud, Cloud, Cloud he he doesn't know what's going on half no. the time. <laughs> honestly, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that that's honest to God truth. But <laughs> all right, after our uh, plug talk, uh, <laughs> we're continuing with our characters. We're continuing with Aerith Gainsborough, voiced by Brianna White. Uh, this is her biggest role to date. Uh, kind-hearted flower girl from Midgar slums who has a mysterious past involving the legend of the Cetra. Uh, we have Tifa Lockhart, voiced by Britt Baron of Glow, a member of Avalanche and Cloud's childhood friend. She runs a pub in Sector 7 slums called Seventh Heaven, which doubles as a rebel group's hideout and has doubts uh, regarding the methods being employed by the group. Uh, we have Red 13, voiced by Max Middleman, uh, Saitaman in One Punch Man, and uh, I'll put this uh, in there because I, I'm a fan of the series for whatever reason. King in Seven Deadly Sins. Um, a mysterious... I was trying to pinpoint his voice, too, the whole time I heard him. He has a I, range that is he incredible. Has, a lot of, he's in a lot of stuff. Yeah, he is in a lot of stuff. And he has a range. Like he, the, the, You see it slip. You hear like a little bit of his normal voice in the one of the past trailers for Rebirth when he sees the girls in their bikinis. <laughs> which is <laughs> weird in itself. Because uh, he doesn't like bipeds. We already know that. Uh, that's oh, he's also Ryuji in Persona 5. Yes, yes, he is. Oh, is he? Ryuji. Yes, yeah. Huh. yeah, the dude's way he's uber talented, he's ridiculous. Yeah. He's talented, he's in everything too. Go to his IMDb, he's got like he, I think he might have like the everything. longest one, honestly. Like, he might have the longest list. Uh, but yeah, he's a mysterious beast who has experimented on by Shinra. He's a, he accompanies Cloud and his friends upon their escape from the Shinra company. Uh, Sephiroth. Voiced by Tyler Hocklin, Superman in Superman Lois series, and again, as I mentioned in the um, in Advent Children, shares the distinction of voicing Superman and Sephiroth with uh, George Newbern, who voiced uh, Superman in Justice League uh, animated series. Uh, he's the main. He was attack- in Teen. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, he was in Teen. He was in- yeah, yeah. Because I remember my sister like watching an episode. And I heard fucking stuff. I was like, what the like, fuck? I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> you start carrying the fucking theme. <laughs> yeah. really shit, bro. Really that was me shit. when I was, funny enough, I was like at one of my friend's houses, uh, Lisa, and she was, she just had pretty little liars on in the background. I was just making myself a drink and getting like some food or whatever. And I hear fucking Nathan Drake. I'm like, the fuck? <laughs> and I look and fucking Northern, Nolan North is in that show. And I was like, oh, really? 
Yeah, yeah, like oh, normal. That's, like that's he's a normal. He's a dad. He's in like shitload episodes. It's so weird when you see those, the crossovers. Nice. Yeah. Nice. It's Hell so yeah. weird, like nice. hearing like voice actors like that you know, yeah. like mm-hmm. you know, like, 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 like Troy Baker in like a TV show, and you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, it was, it was so like, weird. The last of us, you were like, <laughs> you know, yeah. it was a fucking weird one to hear. Uh, the guy who voices Garrus in um, Mass Effect, he's an actor as well. And yeah. his voice doesn't change. Like, he sounds like that in real oh. life. <laughs> they, they added a little bit of, like, alien to him. Just, like, a little bit, like, a little yeah. extra. But, like, when he talks, like, in actor mode, it just sounds like Garrus. It's so weird. That's Insane. Fire. That's awesome. Uh, next, yeah, we have President Shinra, voiced by James Horan, who is Skullface in Metal Gear Solid Five. Oh God, Skullface! Yeah, <laughs> he is. Oh, he seems to be a very what? Yeah, yo. <laughs> start thinking about it. They started clicking in it. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know. Such that. a lust for revenge. <laughs> Who? <laughs> that is crazy. I actually didn't know that. No, that makes a lot of sense now. And okay. when he gets sassy uh, near the end of remake with, with yeah, Barrett, that's what you really. That's get. like really oh, some Skullface shit right there. You're like, like oh wait, what the hell? Spoilers for the future uh, feature of this uh, podcast here, but I fucking love what they did to Rufus at, at oh. the end of this game. Yes, a hundred percent. But yeah, I was pres- going to say he's Ooh, he's in a lot of movies and or a lot of um, video games because I've heard his mm, voice mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's like, like a, yeah, he's in the he's in the Batman games. He's in uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. he's in Warcraft, Red Dead. Yeah, okay, yeah. Because I, I was like, who's he voicing Red Dead? Uh, he's just the dude. He's a local oh. pedestrian. Nice. That makes sense, honestly. But he has such that, a distinct voice that you, oh, you hear it, you're like... He's D3. He plays Ethereal in D3. That's where that's the other place where I haven't heard his voice from. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah, with, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. He's the president of the Shinra Company who cares more about money than the fate of the planet's energy uh, that they're draining. Heidegger, voiced by John DiMaggio, who is Bender... In it is John DiMaggio. Yeah. I didn't look this yeah. up, uh-huh. but like the whole time I'm like, bro, this guy just sounds like fucking um, Jake. No, <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, that's not John DiMaggio, and I never looked it up. Turns yeah. out it was. Should yeah, just Bender, Futurama, Marcus Phoenix, and Gears of War. Uh, one Marcus of comes out a lot in this game. Yeah, especially when he's like Marcus yelling at the lot. troops. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> you're like, oh, like I kind of want to follow you now. <laughs> Uh, he's head of Shinra's public security division, a cruel, scheming man who often advises President Shinra and advocates for the destruction of Avalanche at any cost. Uh, we have Scarlet, voiced by Aaron Cottrell. Uh, I didn't have anything major for her. I mean, all these people are decorated actors. I just didn't have anything major that we could hang our hat on. Uh, yeah, she's not really in the game that often anyway. I think she has like a cutscene in the beginning and a cutscene at the end. That's by other than intermission, and then, obviously. Yeah, I think she, she's going to be more rebirth, I'm sure. Yeah. She has a yeah. she has a bigger role in uh I think Crisis Core than she does in uh in this game, I feel. Fair, yeah, yeah, she yeah, doesn't yeah. she doesn't Scar the Scarlet character doesn't really show up anyway until like yeah halfway through seven OG anyway. Yeah, not 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 that much. Yeah. It was cool to see like the mech though, like the one of the it's, early versions of it. Mm-hmm. I like Ooh. it is gonna be fire when uh, we get to the third game and uh Tifa and uh, Scarlet have their uh I, I wanted I know some people were saying like oh I don't want it. I was like I want it. Also yeah. I wanna shout out okay, 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 never mind. I'll, we'll get to it once we get to it. I wanna shout yeah. out something that Frank has been waiting for in the game and I'm glad that he experienced it. Oh my god, all right. So there we go. Yeah, she, she's the head of Shinra's advanced weaponry division, a sadistic woman who rose through the company's ranks during the war with her powerful weapons and research on materia. We have uh Palmer, uh voiced by William Sailors, who's Doc Ock in Insomniac Spider Ver uh, Spider Man game. Uh he is the head of Shinra Space and Aeronautics Division. Since the Shinra Space program is on hold due to the plenty full supply of Mako on the planet. He has lots of free time, some of which he spends in Wall Market. Uh, Reeve, voiced by John Root, uh, nothing to of note for his uh, his acting wise, is head of Shinra's urban planning division. He's a black sheep among other executives due to his consciousness and general desire to improve the quality of life for the people residing in the slums. Professor Hojo, voiced by James C., who is Eddie Raja in Uncharted. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, he's done a bunch of other stuff, but I just was thinking, like, mm, we got to mention nice. Uncharted. <laughs> yeah. Definitely, uh, definitely. Head of Shinra's Research and Development Division, a man driven by science. He is devoted to finding the so called promised land of the Setra with no concerns for ethics. 
Uh, Kate Sith uh, doesn't talk in this, but it's about a cat who witnessed the destruction of Sector 7. Biggs, voiced by Gideon Emery, who this is fun to mention, is Bathir in Final Fantasy XII, which we'll get to in, oh. a, in a couple months. Uh, he's Bathir, and I I just beat that game last year. I cannot tell the voices. like They don't sound the same. It's insane to me. Um, it, who I would say is also the true hero of that game, but we'll get to that. Yeah, in yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, a member of Avalanche who likes to help uh, the main strategist of Barrett's cell. Uh, Wedge, voiced by Matt Jones, uh, who's Badger in Breaking Bad. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. He's also yeah. in Breaking Bad. That's why the voice Dude. sounds familiar. Dude, oh, you, yeah. 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 You, put, you put him from Breaking Bad into like him and with Wedge in the game, and they're exactly the same. No, I don't really the same. Same. Yeah, He never changes his voice. He's it's just so the same. Good. It was it's bothering so me the whole time because I'm like, man, <laughs> this man sounds so fucking familiar, yeah. and I don't know why. He has it's such so a distinct sick. voice, and he doesn't need to change it. Like, it's, he, he just fits. No, so, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Because yeah. yeah. he's also There's in one uh, voice Bright Burn, too. Instantly, though. And we'll get, mm. you'll, you'll probably get to that in a second. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, that was Wedge. He's a member of Avalanche who dreams of being more than a cowardly sidekick. Jesse, uh, voiced by Erica Lindback, Black Cat in Insomniac, Spider-Man. Um, that makes sense. Oh, that so, we got two people from that, that game. We have Doc Ock and Black Cat. Oh, mm-hmm. A lot more than that. <laughs> oh, yeah, fair. There it is. A lot, yeah. A member of Avalanche yeah. who is an expert on bombs, a former actress. She joins Avalanche because she believes destroying the reactors will help her father. Uh, Marlene Wallace, a voice by Brielle Milla, uh, Barrett's kind hearted daughter who cares for her father and his friends. Uh, Roche, uh, voiced by Austin Lee Matthews, a third class soldier with a strong sense of honor who's obsessed with speed, motorcycles, and competition. One of my favorite additions to this rebirth. Honestly, really glad he's coming back for rebirth. Oh, I, I, was, I was really hyped to see that. I'm a little disappointed like we that. didn't get a rematch in the in the first game, but I imagine they were probably saving it for the second game anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm sure they'll they'll like space it out. Uh, we have Reno, voiced by Arnie Patola, uh, Patoja, uh, a member of the Turks, brash, rebellious, <laughs> rebellious, <laughs> rebellious, and snarky. He fights with his ex- exceptional speed and his roots partner, rude. Voiced by William Christopher Steffens, Jax in Mortal Kombat 11, and Main mm-hmm. in Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Oh, shout out. oh, yeah, he's Main. Yeah. He's Main? Uh huh. Oh, man. Honestly, he should have. Uh, this may, may sound crazy, but he should have voiced Barrett then. Oh, yeah. I didn't so if he did Barrett with, main, with Main's kind of like, like yeah. demeanor and attitude, oh, dude. I'm not saying the the Barrett voice actor was really bad. No, no, but it, you, when you hear Main that he voiced Main in Cyberpunk Edge Runners, you're like, oh, that is basically like a it's bad version. Barrett. Yeah, it's like yeah. a bad version of that. You know, like a, if you if you watch Edge Runners, right, there is a scene where like something happens, like something drops or something like that. There is a slight moment where I believe I know for a fact Jesse's in the background. I think it's Jesse and Barrett, but I could be wrong. Mm. But there there is a Final Fantasy VII like uh reference in cyberpunk edge runners there is yeah i know i know exactly what you're talking about yeah it's really cool um rude is a member of the turks calm and rational always ready to spar uh with a spare pair of glasses pardon me reno's partner and we have sang voiced by vic chow uh kenshi in the newest mortal kombat mortal kombat one he's the leader of the turks working for president shinra not too much of saying in this one but obviously it's probably gonna be more rebirth uh rufus shinra Voiced by Josh Bowman, uh, president of Shinra's son and vice president of Shinra Electric Power Company, ready to take over the company after his father. Uh, he like jumps on that grave. Uh, we have Don Corneo, voiced as we mentioned before in Avent Children by Fred Tassacor, uh, who is Lowe's in Avent Children. He also voices a bunch of stuff, Hulk, and we mentioned before, but he's Lowe's in Avent Children, which has a connection in this game. Now we know. Uh, wealthy man. Were you were you hyped? Were you hyped? Frank, when you saw him, when they re- reenacted that scene from fucking Final oh, Fantasy VII, that, yeah, when you said that, when you said that screenshot, yeah, when you said that screenshot, I was like, oh, he's gonna be excited when he sees that scene. Oh, I know. I, how that was my favorite were... scene in the first one. I was like, this is fucking great. What is it? I'll, I'll cut it off. I'll yeah. I'll stomp, stomp it like, off. Yeah. 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 I'll twist it off. Well, <laughs> Aerith doesn't say I'll twist it off. That was my favorite one. Was Aerith saying I'll twist them because I'm like, ugh. Yeah. yeah. And oh, she's so Aerith cute. And she's so adorable, yeah. and she's like, I'll twist them off. I'm like, oh god, Aerith. No, I believe you. Not. That's the crazy <laughs> thing. Make his dick get twisted. <laughs> Y'all, <laughs> so oh, dick twist. <laughs> uh, 
But yeah, he's a wealthy man from Sector 6 who runs the criminal activity in Wall Market and loves to exploit women, of course. Uh, there's probably a lot of worse shit that he does that we don't know about and I don't want to know about. Uh, and then for specifically remake, and then we'll go into intermission for a little bit because I do have some questions. Um, Zach Fair, voiced by Caleb Pierce, Cloud's friend, Aerith's first love, soldier, now mysteriously surviving the events of his last stand. We look to find out more in Rebirth about his place in this new remake timeline. Yeah, that and was that, an interesting one. Yeah. That was an interesting one. That was, there was so much that happens at that game we'll, we'll touch upon it in, in a moment because I wanted to backtrack with some of the ending scenes specifically. But that when that, that happened, I was like, what what the fuck's the next game? What, what's going to happen? And now we're here, finally, Leap Day, Rebirth Day, and we get to see everything. It's going to be insane. Yeah. Uh, so as episode intermission, we are introduced to Yuffie uh, Kusa, Kusaragi, voiced by Susie Young, who's Makima in Chainsaw Man. It makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it it, but it's awesome. so weird to hear Makima's, like, it, has anyone else other than me and Frank watched Chainsaw Man? So Makima is this very controlling, very like not one note, but she has like a very dulcet tone, like very monotone. Like, yeah, monotone. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. And very powerful. And then you hear Yuffie, and she is so <laughs> just like aloof and very happy. It's like it's yeah. the opposite coin. Yeah. Like it's insane. Um, he's a self possessed, uh, possessed, uh, professed. My God, material hunter and agent of the new Wutai government seeking to restore her homeland of wutai to its former glory uh one of my favorite characters i got introduced in all of remake sanin uh kuzakabe voiced by alexis lee uh who weirdly enough this is another one that blew me up um voice wise is zenetsu in demon slayer so if anyone watches the dub of uh, demon slayer like i I thought they were two completely different people and zenetsu is has one of the most if not the most annoying voice in all of anime purposefully like it's purposely mm. annoying and because his character is very annoying but like very high pitch very like whiny he cries all the time and then to hear this like very deep sexy ass voice from son <laughs> and i'm like there's no <laughs> way you guys are the same person um yuffie's partner from mutai signed with the company in midgar uh now these are two i wanted to touch on um because i'm not too familiar with these so we got weiss the uh, immaculate voiced by damon mills who is kaoru in the evangelion remake movies and the new voice of frieza moving forward uh since their previous actor passed away um the leader of deep ground shinra secret super soldiers who is tasked to hunt down yuffie's party and then finally nero the sable voiced by sean chiplock the the great deku tree in breath of the wild i put here <laughs> uh weiss's brother and deep ground's elite member um this is gonna sound crazy D- deep ground is that crisis core or is that is that's that dirty service that's yeah. dirty service okay okay yeah. like so... that's that's definitely the craziest thing in the dlc like, i knew how important and it was is there too yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah, even the optional fight in remake i was like i have seen this dude before i know he's from one of these uh, opposite games this is a big deal but like why is he here and then playing intermission and then seeing like he's actually part of the story i'm like Wow, I feel like they're teasing a lot earlier <laughs> some stuff. Yeah, it, one of the things I noticed in this remake, just in general, just like the whole thing, is just how much they're trying to take media from other parts of Final Fantasy VII that came out after Final Fantasy VII and trying to incorporate it into the actual story of Final Fantasy VII, right? Like, mm-hmm. like we, we've already discussed this in our Advent Children episode, but there is a lot of Advent Children in this game. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. It, like Cloud clutching it. Like Cloud never clutched his arm in in OG remake, right? That the way you you were told Cloud was like kind of having an out of body experience or something's wrong was that they just like kind of had him like kind of almost his soul coming out of his body, right? Yeah. But in this game, every time the Sephiroth stuff happens, it's the it's his left arm now. It's his arm, his head. Yeah. Like, he's core, like, yeah. You know I mean? Yeah. Uh, Christ, of course, our uh, Advent Children. Mm-hmm. Which kind of yeah, it's funny because the geo stigma. Wait, well, it, it could be a thing that they're they're yeah. kind of teasing. Yeah, it could definitely be. Yeah. They do have yeah. the black goo everywhere. There is black oh, goo. Oh shit, that's right. There is black goo during the fight. Uh, yeah, that's right. Um, so we'll just go through gameplay real quick. Obviously, we've talked about this mainly, but the remake boasts an upgraded ATB system, probably the best fighting system, hands down. And to me, Final it's, the, it's the best. I mean, I was me, really hoping 16 was going to be yeah. the best to me. I, I was really excited for 16, but something about I, seven remake, man, is just 
for yeah and like i don't want to shit on 16 because like a lot of people really do like from like a gameplay point of view but like th- there were some omissions in that in that gameplay system in 16 that i'm like i really don't know how that like no status effects to me is like damn yeah you know like no it's strange. just like a yeah. weird yeah, like yeah, yeah. that's odd like that like it's like little stuff like that but i don't hate it but um seven remake to me is like my favorite combat system like of all time like literally bar none literally yeah. as, as especially on hard when you really get those materials going and like you're Ooh. able to do like the craziest shit and, and it's you like you're playing chess like hard. you know you're like you're, you're switching so the barrier you're doing this you're doing yeah. that yeah, yeah. It's fucking awesome. And I if you don't it, switch, like it. it feels weird. Like if you don't switch to Barrett and uses like uh, was it Overdrive, right? To te- take like chip away big damage and then switch mm-hmm. over to like Tifa to do like and at the beginning of a fight. Like I felt like I always had a rhythm. Like do these yep. three things real quick. Come back to Cloud. Like build up his ATB. Do Braver. Like it. It's insane how well it feels. Like we've talked about this. I think in the very first time the ATB came out was that Final Fantasy three Harv. Yeah, right? Right. that the idea behind the ATB system was to change it up and have you be more active. Obviously, which is the name of the system, active time battle. But I really don't feel like until every iteration after three feels like they got closer and closer and closer to what the initial idea and hope was way back in like ni- 1990. Oh, yeah. right? And now 100%. it's 2020 and they finally hit it. They finally got yeah. it like where I think is where they always wanted it, where you're actively attacking, you're slashing, you know, you're doing the operator, you're doing the punisher, you're, you're switching back and forth, you're using material, you're you're building up that gate so you can use an item material or braver or anything like that. I think it's it's incredible. And then keeping the material system and doing the abilities as like instead of having the limit break be braver, like having it be an ability, I think it was uh, just so many ideas that they had that were just brilliant absolutely brilliant yeah. in this game i like i like the atb system a lot i like this new system a lot um mm-hmm. in terms of just fighting um i think it's i think it's really well done in terms of just making it feel still like a, a turn-based game but still having that kind of active combat i do have gripes with it a little oh, bit okay. it does need some work like final fantasy 16 as as kind of inconsequential as the combat kind of is in terms of just like status effects and and like you know uh rpg elements in terms of like how much your combat like your attack base does and stuff like that i think it did a good job at knowing how that combat works you know what i mean like if you're going to do that this kind of like sword play combat um stuff like blocking stuff like parrying uh I did things, appreciate it more yeah that's, that's yeah that's, that's, things that's those great. those are the two things that i really hope rebirth fix i, I haven't looked at anything of rebirth but they do okay good because okay. yeah yeah i good. will tell you i'm i almost dropped dro- drove a fucking fist through a wall because blocking and dodging in this game are useless they're yeah, absolutely that's, useless that's, yeah, they're a suggestion and that's it um that's very and true. That's very true. later on with the bosses who mm. are who do instant attacks who do it like who who stagger you who like you know like kind of like stop you from doing anything it does get a little annoying when, when you like dodge but it still hits you you know what i mean it's like oh great and mm-hmm. then the ai obviously is a little little mm-hmm. iffy mm-hmm. um i i i don't know how to get my my ai partners to heal me consistently because they will uh they will forget that they have healing material on a lot of the times <laughs> like god damn it Aaron, uh, i need your help I thought that you or can even set that. Am I dreaming that? I thought that you can like talk. Yeah, there the... you can, but I'm they never sure, do right? it for me. There's a way oh. you can set it so depending on how much HP, it's like the gambit system a little it's bit. 12, uh, yeah. from from twelve, where you can yeah. kind of see like how much HP you have, and then they'll, they'll do a heal. I found myself Mine easier just bug. to switch over, you know, just to go to Aerith yeah. and just use. That's, it. that's one, yeah, what I wound up doing is like switch there over to Aerith, have her do the thing, and then switch back. Um, and then you know, obviously, I don't know if you guys ever had this issue, but there a lot of the times I would just kind of look at the NPCs and they'll just be blocking. They're just standing there blocking, yeah, not doing mm-hmm. anything. And I'm like, they're not as intelligent. Do something. Do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Barrett, um, like I would have to go to Barrett to, and I, I, I found it like especially the second playthrough. I'm like, why is your ATB in, like maxed out? Gauge? So it's that, or it's not even doing. Like you're not even. It's not building up for any reason. I would go to him and start shooting. I'm like. It's filling up so quick. Why are you? What are you doing? Yeah. Like, what's going on here? Yeah, like I would go to Aerith and like to heal, and then she's like at like a little bit. I'm like, you're you're throwing balls this whole time. What have you been doing? <laughs> yeah, like, where uh, did you lose all this stuff? But it's funny. But yeah, no. You mentioned the parry and and the blocking system. I found myself instinctively because of sixteen and because of a lot of modern like action games hitting R one to constantly yeah. like see if it, I could parry back, and I'm like, 
wait, and it's not doing anything. And I completely forgot. I was like, shit. And there is some where it works. There is some, they, they programmed some fights that has like, if you block properly or if you dodge properly, you get rewarded for it. The Reno fight in church is one of them. Mm, where mm-hmm, if you mm-hmm. block his attack, you can jump over him and get like a uh, and, and do some damage to him yeah. if you time it properly. The problem is the timing. Good luck getting the timing done properly. It's it's yeah. absolutely nuts in this game. But in terms of combat, though, honestly, you could just brute force your way through everything. Like you could just like you you could just have fun and hack and slash if you want to, and you or.